Okay, everybody, take two. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but my internet dropped when I was sitting on my porch and there were big trucks going by and I think Spirit was just like, this is not the place for you to do this video, so. All right, let's try this again, shall we? So my friends, welcome, welcome again to this live stream. We're gonna try this take two. Jen Rapinian, take two. Um, all right, so this video, <laughs> if you saw this before, this video is a continuation of the live stream I did yesterday about fuck launches and business strategy. And I had, hey Chris, I had, um, hey Christy, I had some a ton of support from this video. I had a lot of support, thank you to all of you who came to me and said, that totally resonated with me, I feel the same way, that's what I needed to hear right now. Awesome, thank you so much, appreciate that. There were also some that came to me with some questions and maybe like kind of concerns about that video and kind of thought, hey Melissa, hey Mercy, um, some questions and concerns about what I was saying. And so I wanted to clarify a couple of things about that. Um, so let's start with launches and business strategy. So some concerns were brought to me like, well, you know, what's wrong with that? Like launches can be a beautiful thing. You can absolutely honor yourself and create a launch strategy that works for you. And that is, you know, totally without, you know, a lot of stress or a lot of heaviness or just, you know, and I said, you know, and I agree with that. There's nothing wrong with these strategies. I'm not saying they're wrong, right? They're not, there's nothing right or wrong. It's a strategy. It's a, like a theory and an idea. It has gotten results for people, so we know it works. So if you follow them, it can work. It's not a guarantee, but it can work. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't do them. Um, what I am saying is that there are many people who go searching and searching for things outside of them to set them free, to change their lives, to um, save them you know, from a situation. And I am being bold to say that a lot of times those strategies are not the things that you need. A lot of times people do these strategies and either it doesn't work for them or they just don't feel, it might get them short-term results but they don't end up sticking with it or it doesn't feel good after a while. And that's more of what I'm talking about. When we're trying to look outside of ourselves to fix our lives, to do something. So we're just putting something together for the sake of creating because we feel like, and our culture here in America is very like this right now, very much like this. You need to be doing, doing, doing. And if you're not doing, then you're lazy, you're entitled, something's wrong with you, you're a leech or whatever. There's this kind of expectation that you need to be just going, going. And I am in a place for myself and in a place where I'm talking more and more about a different consciousness. This is not, I will not come, this is not, my videos are not meant to bash or that video yesterday was not meant to bash or criticize any of my fellow coaches um, any or minimize anybody's results or take away from that or say that anything's bad or wrong or cheesy or slimy or anything like that. Absolutely not. I'm not, it's, I love coaching. That is my passion. One-on-one -on -one coaching um, is my passion and I love it. And so one of my strengths and zones of genius, that's where I love to be. So, and I think the coaching profession is amazing and I think it works so well. It's definitely transformed my life in many ways and continues to do so, but it's a very, it's very, um, important it's one it's a choice to make whether you're going to be a coach or you're going to hire a coach to be discerning as to what is it that you really want and why do you want it and when you're choosing someone to work with making sure you're in alignment with it or what kind of coach you're choosing to be make sure you're in alignment with it and i think this is where we get stuck hey everybody because we want to just do we see it working for other people feeling a little fomo or just trying to or you know and there are a lot of believe me there are some i mean there's always the good and the bad in any profession there are some coaches out there or sometimes i see this happen with network marketing where they make you feel like shit if you're in a nine to five job or if you choose not to do coaching or network marketing or if you choose your or if you're not getting results that somehow something's wrong with you or somehow you just don't want it you're just um your mindset you're just so stuck in your mindset you have a scarcity mentality or you know whatever like just all this like and to me 
That's fear-based marketing. That's fear-based marketing. It works really well, unfortunately. As you can look in any mainstream media, every advertisement is designed to make you feel like you're missing something or you're not good enough. So you need to buy my stuff. And I think especially with women, we get caught up in this thing. We, get, we can easily fall prey to that. Empaths, absolutely. Because we're so open, so receptive, and we take things in so personally. And so, and we somehow with empaths, we can really be in a place in our lives when we're searching. We're searching for the answers. We're searching for our purpose. We're just in that place where we're constantly seeking. And what happens when we're seeking a lot is that we are, we tend to grab at the shiny objects or be very um, open to being influenced by perhaps things and people that aren't in alignment with us truly. And so that's what I'm saying is there are those people out there and, you know, karma's, karma's a biatch. I don't, it's not my job to worry about it or to bash it or to call it out. It's like karma does that for me. I don't, I don't deal with that. I'm focused on the awareness, my own consciousness, expanding my own mind, becoming a better version of myself and helping to ignite as many empaths and light workers as I can. That's so I don't, they can do their shiz. Okay. So but I don't, do I coach some of my one-on-one -on -one clients on their businesses? Yes, I've done it with my one-on-ones and with my groups and they have had results and that's awesome. And I am so like fired up for them. I will celebrate them on my personal page. You may have seen me, but I'll also celebrate them. But it does to me, like I'm not always chasing that out exterior result to celebrate. That doesn't always mean success. And that's where, I, where I'm getting at with like launches and business strategy. I will also celebrate my clients. And I don't see many coaches do this. And I wish more would do this, except for um, one that I've seen, which is um, Amanda King, um, a friend of mine. And I, I've taken her classes. She's a great, fantastic coach. I, see, I saw her yesterday just celebrate each client. And it's not always based on monetary results. It's also based on someone who just showed up consistently, someone who broke through a personal barrier, someone who did something for the first time that was scary, right? That, so when we're forcing ourselves to put ourselves in a box of a strategy or a launch, like it's just, it pulls us out of our higher self. It pulls us out of your connection to divine because now you're trying to get something. And like I said, it doesn't always mean you're being deceitful or mean or cheesy, truly, you know, we are all in business or people who are doing business, you know, want to earn an income and we need to, and I get that. But when you're trying to get or make something bigger than you, if I, I have to do it this way in order to get the results, we're putting always things outside of us. Do this and you'll succeed. Do this for two weeks. Here's a launch process. For two weeks, you gotta have a pre-launch. Then for two weeks, you gotta have a launch. And then you gotta create content that's this, this, and this. And then you need to, you know, just, it goes on and on and on and it becomes this heavy thing and instead of instead of something that's divinely inspired which is i think where people can get kind of tripped up and create like i've got to create a brand i've got to create a website i've got to do this without fully knowing yourself first without fully knowing yourself first and that's where i'm coming from the strategies can it's amazing how you just do things taking divinely inspired action when you're truly like on fire and lit up about something when you're truly working in your gifts when you're truly doing something that is of the highest calling for you and you can feel it you're not forcing it you're not and i'm not i don't like call i don't call people out for procrastinating i don't call people out for feeling like oh you're in analysis paralysis or you're procrastinating or you're this or you're that i would say something's out of alignment know that you are where you are for a reason if we're truly trusting if we're going to a higher consciousness as a humanity right as humans that 4d 5d then know that there are no mistakes right because there were some concerns brought to me that my video yesterday saying you know fuck strategy is saying allowing people to stay stuck allowing people to stay stuck in their limiting beliefs allowing people to um just you know stay in their old stories and not and telling people not to take action and that's absolutely not what i'm saying i am actually saying i want you to take inspired action which means getting to know really who you are and what you want before you go out and do the thing 
before you go out and do the thing. So that means, uh, that could mean there's healing work that needs to be done. That could mean there's some shadow work that needs to be done. And that could mean there just has to be a degree of self-awareness that I don't think some many people have when they're starting these businesses or when they're stepping into their light worker powers. It's that, t that, that it, and it's not easy to find a coach who can do this right with you or who, who is willing to do this work with you. It's usually like coaches want to go and celebrate their client's success and how much money they made and how many clients they signed up, which is totally celebrate worthy. I'm not saying it's not right. I am not coming from a scarcity mentality or a lack of abundance mentality where like I'm, I don't get triggered by people celebrating these things. Do celebrate every single victory. There's more than enough to go around. There's more than enough to go around. They truly come from an abundance mentality. So, but there's also time, which I want people to understand that it's worth it to take the time and get to know yourself and be super self-aware. Know where your passions are. Know where your gifts are. Nurture them. Develop them. Heal. Heal any wounds that you need to heal, right? And do any shadow work that you need to do. Because it's amazing how limiting beliefs kind of melt away when you're truly focused on purpose. When you truly come up with an idea that you're like, shit, this is awesome. All of a sudden, you don't feel those limiting beliefs about money or about putting yourself out there or about what other people will say. None of that, none of that shit seems to matter anymore. And doesn't mean the road to doing whatever you're doing isn't gonna have its obstacles. It's not gonna be hard work sometimes, cause it is. But it's so much better when you absolutely know it's your highest fucking calling. And when you're not chasing things that are outside of you, you're not chasing the next best strategy, you're not chasing the next shiny object, you're not chasing that system that's gonna do everything for you automatically, you're not chasing this coach that has this flashy lifestyle that it looks really good, but is that totally in alignment with you? And if it is, it is. Like, But you know what I'm saying. Or you're chasing the money, you're chasing the money. When I get money, I will be okay. Right? And I know like there are people out there who are really, really struggling right now and single moms who like need to come up with a solution. And I get that. So I would still venture to say that you can do this inner work and get to know yourself and get to develop your gifts. What are your gifts? Get to know them and focus on your strengths and create something epic. Instead of working, working, working to create something that you kind of go, eh, after a while, or you're not that motivated by it, or you're not that fulfilled by it, and then you have to maintain it, and then you find yourself getting sick because you have to still maintain this job or this business that you created that's not totally alignment with you. And I have found that happening with coaches, with network marketers who earn this amazing income, but all of a sudden they get sick. It's not sustainable when it's not in alignment, as good as it may look on the camera. It's not, you know, or other areas of their life are falling apart. So, by the way, part of what inspired me to say all this is work that I'm doing with my mentor, Kyle Cease, right here. Okay, and he, this, his book, this just came out. So I'm going to put a link to it in the comments. I would so recommend that you read this. Um, it's The Illusion of Money, Why Chasing Money is Stopping You from Receiving It. Um, so good, like so going towards the 5D. If you want, because to me, all this strategy stuff keeps us in the 3D, like keeps us in this consciousness of it's all on the outside. We have to have a one, two, three step, be told what to do in order to succeed. And who knows what succeed is? And we're letting other people define success for us. When who knows what that is for you? You have to define it. Now, by the way, this is, I heard another concern about my video that I'm allowing people to have a scarcity money mindset or I'm saying that making high levels of income is bad or you know it's selfish to want money or it's bad to want money. No fucking way. I would rather see light workers be financially free and have all the financial resources they need to do more of their good work in the world and to allow themselves to make the best choices for their lives, buy the best food live in like wear clothes that feel good like is the best and softest cotton or whatever that nourishes them that allows them to go you know get natural healing doctors or whatever they need like whatever it is be able to travel totally money does things for us it gives choice and if you want a lot of it and to live an up leveled upscale lifestyle 
awesome. If that's truly what you want, do it. But I would rather see you get there because you came up with a divinely inspired idea that led, that money was a byproduct of your idea. Not because you were chasing the five figure months, but because the five figure months found you because you were doing something that was so in line with your gifts that was so aligned with who you were. And I'm not gonna say anymore, I'm gonna correct myself, it's a habit, but I'm correcting myself. I'm not gonna say when you find your purpose anymore. I'm not gonna say that. And I'm not gonna say when you do something that's your purpose. Your purpose is to be right now. Your purpose is to be who you are at this very moment, doing what you're doing right now. And that could be anything as far as maybe your purpose today is to rest and nurture your body. Maybe your purpose today is to go to the grocery store. Maybe your purpose today is to call 10 people and connect with them about what you've got going on. Maybe your purpose today is to go live for the first time. Doesn't even matter. Like, maybe your purpose today is to be with your family, your children, your partner. Being, being, being all day long. All day long. And in the being comes the inspiration for the doing. And we're doing it backwards where we're doing, 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 waiting for that inspiration and waiting for the results outside to show, to validate that what we're doing is worth it. And I say, fuck that. Purpose is having great sex every fucking day. You better be having great sex. If not, we need to talk because that's another way you're going to be able to get in touch with your body, your higher self, your goddess, get lit up and download. That's what I'm saying. That's all part of it. That's part of the hair on fire life, okay? But that's a whole other video. Um, but this is, you know, seriously, it's not about having a scarcity mentality. I want to see you reach the level of success of what that means for you. Happiness and fulfillment is the result. Is the result. And we're afraid sometimes of being content in our society. Being content means you're just sitting. You're unproductive. You're not doing anything. So we're like, shit, I'm content. I can't be content. I got to go do something. I got to achieve more. I got to do. No. What if being content is the goal? And by being content and by being in the moment, you all of a sudden get this download for something else at some point. Doesn't can't tell when it is, can't put a time frame on it. Give yourself the time, do the work and the healing work. So, you know, really under, be self-aware of where you're at before you go out and do these launch strategies, do this branding, do all this shit, create all this courses and do it and feel like that's what's gonna save me. That's the key of how I'm gonna get out of this, okay? Know yourself first. Do the work to know yourself. Do the work to know what your gifts are, what lights you the fuck up. Do the work to get in touch with your intuition. If you don't feel like you're in touch with your inner self, if you feel like you don't know how to hear your inner voice or your intuitive self, you need to learn this. It's, it's not, it's always there. Don't think you don't have it or it's a gift that some people just have or it's some elite club. Everybody has it, but we get very, very caught up in 3D mind, very programmed to be looking for someone to tell us what to do and to tell us what to think and to tell us what's okay and not okay and what to like and not to like and tell us what success means and tell us what not success means and make you feel like you're not good enough. We live in a society that's telling us not we're not good enough all day long. You look on Facebook, scroll. Instagram, scroll. Um, go out media, commercials advertisements to tell us we're not good enough everywhere we turn and our job in the next consciousness is to say fuck that fuck you and I'm done I am absolutely where I'm supposed to be right now so if you're feeling like you're not motivated you're feeling like you're procrastinating you feel like you're putting things off you're feeling like you keep getting stuck in the same shit over and over again and you can't get out it's only because you're not allowing yourself to be completely self-aware, not being totally honest with yourself, and you're not allowing yourself to do the inner work that needs to be done, the shadow work, the deep healing, and we're gonna go back, like, you know, go back and heal. We don't have to analyze every little thing from your childhood by any means. You don't have to remember everything, but just being aware of it, and then finding out what truly lights you up, and being unafraid and unapologetic to embody that and give yourself permission. And Kyle will say in this book, he calls it um, being your tenniest 10 
which means, I mean, and my clients know I've worked with you on this too, is making every area of your life a 10. Every decision you make is a 10. It, does this make me feel like a 10? And not like, like that movie from the 80s <laughs> with Bo Derek, where she's in like the beads and the braids and the bathing suit. Like not a 10 in that way, but meaning, because you're already a fucking 10 in that way, but meaning like, does this feel so fucking good? Because he says often we're living in a world of nine or less, where what we do is not feeling like our tenniest 10. And when you are your tenniest 10, then everything falls into fucking place. And the world does not want you to know this. Why? Because when you're empowered, when you have either emotional health and emotional intelligence or financial wealth, you are not controllable anymore. Shit, that, that threatens the establishment, doesn't it? That threatens the 3D. So let's be fucking disruptors. I am here to help. This is what I'm doing, y'all. I am igniting lightworkers and empaths because I want you to become a disruptor in this world. I want you to be the ones who transcend the 3D fucking consciousness and that you are seeing for yourself when we are just caught in this is illusion is a great word this endless illusion and stop depending on other people and other things to tell you what's right for you but no but sometimes yes you might need help getting there i get it that's why i'm a coach that's why i do readings because we need sometimes people to facilitate the process and reconnect us to ourselves but it's a guarantee if you do the work, you're gonna get there. There's no way you're not gonna get there. Maybe it'll take you a month, a year, five years, whatever, but know that the, your consciousness will expand in the way it's supposed to, that your life has already been kind of carved, like your life purpose and path has already been predetermined. You're gonna do that. The first step is just knowing you want to. I want to. I'm tired of this hamster wheel shit. I'm tired of doing things that feel kind of eh and meh. Okay, and this doesn't mean like adulting is hard and we can't adult, okay, we, we have to adult. But why does adulting have to be hard? Why does it have to suck? Because we're not living in our tenniest tens. That's why, that's why, why, why? So that's why, we're, that's, that's totally what we're here to do now is to break free of this illusion that adulting has to be hard and that we have to look to all these strategies and tools and things to give us our next level, to give us success. We redefine success, what it means for you, and success is the whole, the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle, money, health, relationships, love, sex, intimacy, friendships, um, what you eat, your body, like all the shit, all of it. But it's gonna require you to be in the present moment. It's gonna require you to do work in the present moment and let the divine speak to you, which is why I'll preach meditation all day long. Uh, my mentor does as well, um, that in the silence comes the answers. I don't care if you tell me you're type A and you can't calm down. Yes, you can. And, that, and the reason why, and just that, that reason, that excuse saying I can't be quiet, I can't sit still, I can't, my mind's too bad, I need to be, that's the reason why you need to do meditation. That's the reason why you have to get back in touch with your higher self. And I will say, I'll, I'll give you a pass and I'll let you say, okay, if you want to have your meditation be exercise or belly dancing or doing running or acting or singing or creating or painting right now while you're getting in touch with being in the moment because the activities that you're passionate about, by the way, you're passionate about something, probably a little hint, you should be doing more of it. But if you're in that moment, downloads will come for sure. Doesn't always have to be in the silence, but in the silence though is where the most profound things come but for real i mean totally for real so if you have to get into your body by doing something creative to get in the moment to kind of train your nervous system to be there and then you just start with two minutes start with two minutes then go to five then go to ten and I'm telling you, when you sink into that place, you'll know there's no right or wrong. Don't judge yourself, but just do this and know that you're, maybe that 10, tenniest 10 for you is just learning to be today, allowing yourself to be and see what happens. And just, I don't know. We gotta do this, my friends. We gotta do this. And somebody said, um, 
And some, a lot of coaches will say this following your bliss is bullshit and it's just a bunch of crap to let people stay stuck in their mentality or their scarcity or their money stories. And I say, your money stories will also melt away. I am more than happy to help people do money manifestation and all the, you know, all those things to manifest money or, or you know, like upgrade your mindset. But truly when you lock into what it is that you really want to do and maybe it's not doing right now, but being, but then it will come to you. All of those shitty beliefs kind of just melt away. They do, they might come up and bug you now and then, but your passion for what you want to do fucking is greater than anything. Have, if any of you have watched Gary Vaynerchuk, you're gonna know what I'm saying. That man, <laughs> that man, I love watching him. He works like 16 hours a day and he's go, 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 go. All over traveling, meetings, all like, it's like a whirlwind. And he loves it so much that he's in his zone all the time. And it doesn't mean, and he will say this, it doesn't mean you have to do that to succeed. It doesn't mean he's telling you to live his lifestyle, but he truly stepped into what turns him on. And it's, it's obvious when you watch him and he's very successful, it just follows him. He doesn't have to go and do a certain thing. He just shows up and he shares what he believes in, he shares what he's doing, he shares how he is living his best life. And he, so that's, do what makes you that excited, that the strategy and the energy to do it, the motivation, it just comes and the, the, the like, the limiting beliefs of what other people fucking say or what they think or that I'm too old, I'm too young, I can't, I have kids, I don't have kids, this, that, falls away. It will fall away and you will just be so compelled to move. I would rather see my clients move from that space of being so compelled instead of I have to create a brand now um, or I have to do this um, and I have to have a launch strategy. I will help you create a launch strategy if you're doing something that fills your cup and lights you up, then yeah, we can create, we can plan something if that feels right to you. If it doesn't, then what does feel right to you? Totally, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as much as we make it make our make um what am I say? Lead ourselves to believe that it does. You, all of this will follow. All this will follow if you are living from your highest space. And if you feel like you're you know, feeling stuck, then something is not aligned with you. Something's not aligned and that needs to be looked at. It's either your shadow, your inner work, or just your self-awareness needs to grow. Or you're just going in a direction just to do and it's not truly your highest calling. And that's okay. You don't have to do it in a certain time frame. You're putting a time frame pressure on yourself. I have to be doing something by the end of this year. Shit, breathe. Meditate, slow down. That's slow down to go fast. One of my old mentors used to say that is to go slow to go fast because when you go slow and you truly become aware of yourself and your gifts and you nurture it, all of a sudden shit starts happening and it's like, whoa, and you lock in and then everything goes fast and it seems like overnight success. Nope, it was in the making. Um, Someone had a question I wanted to answer about an empath. How do I know I'm an empath, I believe? Um, how do I know if I'm an empath? Um, there are many ways to know if you're an empath. Um, in fact, I have a, a PDF guide and I have a quiz. So I will post, I will respond to your comment with the link to the quiz and you can take the quiz. There are little, there are little ways that you can know. Um, for example, absorbing a lot of energy. You find yourself absorbing energy of situations of people. Um, you find yourself very sensitive to the situation or the energy wherever you show up. Um, you find yourself very like your emotions can be very up and down and you're very influenced by, say for example, watching a sad movie or if you see someone get hurt or you read about someone get hurt you feel that too like an empath can take on the feelings of another person or another another living creature or a situation and can truly feel that it's not just like yeah i, I understand how you feel it's actually no i really feel what you're feeling that's an empath um and someone who has great empathy and compassion and has this urge to want to help everybody and change the world. 
no, we can't do that. We can't help and heal everybody. But there's this kind of like urge with inside us. Um, so you may, empaths usually have psychic and intuitive abilities as well. So if you feel like you have those, um, pay attention to that. You're most likely an empath. So I will respond to your comment, my friend, with a link to the quiz and just take the quiz. And if you score like five or more on that, you're most likely an empath. Um, so, and even I think if you're even asking, you probably are. I would venture to say if you're feeling it, like you feel like you might be an empath, you probably are. Um, but that is to me, empaths are here to really step into and have that self-awareness and open yourself up to learning about your gifts because you are the catalysts to the next level of consciousness for the world. We're not here to force anybody. We're not here to convince or sell anybody on this idea. We are here to just be and just share and just ignite other people. That's it. With, and detach from the outcome. Be detached from that. You're not trying to get people. You're just trying to ignite. And that might mean just one little thought, plant a little seed. But your job is to in the being. Your job is in the being. You're being an empath and you're tuned in and tapped in and turned on. A turned on empath is a powerful fucking person, okay? Especially a powerful female turned on empath. That's who I feel like is really gonna have to rise up now. We are being called to rise up, female empaths, into that hair on fire goddess being and that goddess energy because that's where you're going to be using your gifts in the highest and you're truly gonna be stepping into your highest calling. Um, so hang out with me, my friends. If you're not in my group, The Awakened Empath, come and hang out. This is, you know, we're going to be doing this work. We're going to be going through this. If you're an empath and you want to dive deeper, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I do intensive programs that most likely I'm going to do one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, my next one is Lightworker Rising coming in November to help you open up your psychic gifts and your intuitive gifts. Get in touch with so you can really know what your intuition is. How do you know what your intuition is versus just your voices in your head ego? How do you talk to your spirit guides and connect with them? How do you do readings for the other side for mediumship? How do you do card readings? Um, all of these are gateways and tools to opening yourself up. And once you're opened up, then again, you open yourself up for more downloads from the divine as to what is your next right thing to do. Right? There's no one purpose. Your purpose is to be the highest vibration empath possible, to learn how to manage your energy so you're not absorbing the toxicity. And you can do all this. It's really easy. Some empaths think it's impossible. No fucking way. You are powerful, all powerful. So step into it. Don't be afraid. And don't be afraid to step out as weird. I want you to let the freak flag fly. You're weird, but weird is normal right? This is the next consciousness. This is not weird. This is not alternative. This is not holistic. This is not hippy dippy. This is like, this is truly where we're going. Imagine what the world would be like if all empaths were standing in their power and tapped in and turned on. What changes could we fucking make? I can't even. Like, it makes me want to cry. Like just thinking about that and watching the world struggle right now. But I can't, we can't save the world right now. And we can only heal ourselves. Heal thyself, empaths. That's the way we're going to open the doors. And then see what you're going to do. Yes. Oh, and by the way, um, our freak flags are flying in my VIP group, And She Rises. We just had our first live coaching call last night. Um, so like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sisterhood energy. Um, loved it so much. So if you want in on that, just comment below VIP and I'll tell you what it's about. I do card readings for this group. Um, we do a lesson of the month, a theme of the month. Right now we're talking about releasing the past because shit, we can't be doing our empath work or our light worker work carrying a big bag of stuff, right? We can't carry a big bag of stuff. So, but our experiences are what makes us empathy, uh, empathetic and compassionate. So we need them, but we don't have to carry them like a weight. So, um, so that's it. So um, the Awakened Empath program, the doors have closed for that. Um, so I am going to be starting that next week. If somebody wants to know about that, this is a one-on-one -on -one program between me and my clients. So it's eight week intensive of working with me one-on-one -on -one to open up your empath gifts. If you wanna get in, 
I will open up a couple more spaces if people really want to get in because you're struggling as an empath to get a hold of your energy or get a hold of how you feel or feel like you're you need to know what your gifts are and understand yourself. I will let message me. I will I will talk to you. Um, but the VIP group is a great place to start if you want to come on in and come hang out and come connect with people who are like minded, who are loving and, you know, really there to support and uplift you. Um, last night we talked about um, dealing with addiction and, you know, and as empaths, how we can manage our way through this. So good. Um, so so many things we're gonna talk about. It's a safe space, okay? The VIP group is a safe space. My Awakened Empath is my free group. So we're just gonna, I have unit section with many lessons in there of about money, about spirituality, about manifestation, law of attraction, um, about psychic mediumship. And right now, um, today we have a beautiful guest who's gonna be talking about healing the mother wound, okay? Does that sound good or what? That's Monica Carlos, who was one of my speakers in the Awakened Empath series. So if you're not in my group, my free group, get your butt, get your empath butt in there because you want to hear what she has to say. She's amazing. Um, what else? And that's it. And then Lightworker Rising. You're gonna spend four months with me learning how to open up your psychic gifts. And I'm gonna have you practice and I'm gonna have you connect with what's real for you. Is your gift connecting with the angels? Is your gift connecting with spirit, other side? <clears throat> is your gift sight? Is it hearing? This is what we're gonna figure out and how you can go into the world and use this to improve your life. Or if you wanna make it a business, then I can help you launch that too. Um, but I'm not gonna be all about this one particular strategy. I'm gonna help you launch your light worker business in a way that's authentic to you and feels good. Because if it doesn't feel good, you're not gonna do it. And if it's not totally right, you're going to waste your time launching something that doesn't have meaning to you and isn't fulfilling to you and it's going to suck. So I'm not going to let my clients do that. So this is, um, the free group is called the Awakened Empath, Heather. Um, so if any of those things, um, if any of those things sound like the level of support you need, let me know because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to activate empaths and light workers to expand their consciousness and step into their gifts unapologetically and like a badass okay so and this is this is your time we're coming into the next year this is some serious shit going on right now this is your time to do this and this is this the world needs this we don't we can't change the world by ourselves we have to ignite one soul at a time and then together we form this collective fire of beauty and passion and truth that's the, the fuck we're here to do all right, so I love you guys. Hey, Lizette, another powerful light worker up in here. I'm so happy to see you. Um, so that's it. So it is, I love you guys, and I actually have to go to a reading soon, so I have to go, but I love you so much. If you want info on either my private readings, my VIP group, my light worker rising program, coaching with me one-on-one, -on -one, or if you want to squeak into the awakened empath, you got like today I can't like we start next week um, and I'm doing this one-on-one -on -one with people for eight weeks we're gonna we're gonna dive in we're gonna dig in you know what I'm saying it's time to dig in and do this work I'm not gonna bog your bot like burden your mind with a bunch of strategy and theory it's unlocking you returning you back to you you've already got the power it's not me I'm not bestowing the power on you you have it already I am just gonna help you reignite you're just your light got a little dim we're just gonna help reignite. That's what we're going to do, okay? And then next year, I have lots in the works in 2020, and I think I'm gonna focus on goddess. Yeah, I'm gonna focus on some hair on fire, goddessy stuff. How to light up in all areas of life. Woo! You know what I'm saying? Because y'all gotta do it. All right, I love you guys so much. I, I just, just message me. You need me? You message me, and I love you, and I'm here, and I will talk to you soon. Have an awesome, high vibe, kick ass day.